Now let's take a quick look at doing something that is textured and doing something more like a background. Um, so I'll open up a, a scene file that has everything in it. Um, or actually, I'll open up just the loft first to, to show you how you can export this one. So this is what the loft looks like in Maya. And I will export this loft out into Toon Boom. It's got an outside and an inside, and it renders out when you hit the render button. You always kind of want to check to make sure it renders properly in Maya because when you get to the rendering stage in Harmony, which we'll do next week, um, if it doesn't render properly in Maya, it won't render properly in our software either. But this is what I'm going to render out here. When I actually am bringing everything together, if I want everything to be the same size, let me open up the scene file that has everything in it. So in this scene file, I've got many different objects. I've got the background there, I've got this platform, I've got this car, and I've got that um, garage door. And I want all of these elements to be separate elements, but they're kind of a part of a set that will always be together. So because of that, I want one file that has them all in it so that they're at the right relative size. But when I export it, because you're doing the export all, you just want to select, for example, the car. Um, you'll temporarily delete everything else in the scene. You'll do a save as of the scene, save it as, you know, car.mb, my binary, and then you can export out your FBX. Then you can undo, undo, get back to the main scene that has everything in it, and then you can just save the platform. Um, as a new scene. Do a save as platform and you can save out your FBX or your OSB. So in the end everything that you want to animate in Harmony should be on its own model or in its own scene file. But you still would have a master scene that has everything in it just to keep everything at the same size. So then once you have exported everything else out you can go back in Harmony. Now I can do a file import 3D models and I'll browse now for the loft, which in this case I have an OSB file. Create a new layer for that. And so now you'll notice that um, when the loft comes in, the loft comes in with its textures. It shows um, an OpenGL preview of the textures here directly in the software. And it shows those textures directly in the software because when you save the FBX format and the OSB format, it will package the textures in or bundle the textures in with the file. In the case of FBX, you have to enable that option, so you have to make sure that you turn on bundle the textures. OSB, it's on by default, so you don't have to worry about that. But once it's in here, just like before, I could even attach this loft to the same peg as the car so that they're um, sized relatively the same. And um, so if I now take a look in here, as I'm moving around in my perspective view, I'm using the same spacebar uh, one and two to zoom in and out. Um, these are the two move shortcuts. And then it's Alt and Control, or sorry, uh, yeah, con Control and Alt or uh, Command and Alt on Mac to move around in this space. So the relative sizing here is correct for the car, but the car is, um, you know, on the ground and stuff. So I can keep the, um, the car or the loft and the car sharing the same peg there, but I'll add an additional peg for the loft, and I'll also make this in a 3D peg so that I can move the loft around. So uh, in my perspective view now, I can zoom out of here, and then I can move this loft and reposition it relative to the car so that it makes more sense what the car is doing, because the car is probably going to be moving uh, or, or driving out of the loft, so I might want to just move that over. And maybe I'll make use of my top view just to drag this guy over really quickly here and uh, reposition that the way I want it to, and I definitely want to have the opening of the door over on this side. So I like to grab just on the red, uh, red, green, and blue handles when I rotate things to constrain the axis that I'm rotating them on. Um, and sometimes, by the way, it also helps to have certain scenes that have walls cut out of them. So for example, I could have a version of this model that doesn't have this front wall so that as I'm Oops, and I don't want to actually have animation on that, but I'll fix that. Uh, so I might want to have this wall cut out of one version of the model so that it's easier for me to manipulate that in the software. Oops, what did I do? Um, I think I moved the wrong keyframe. So this, it looks good at the end, but it doesn't look good at the beginning. So it looks like there's a keyframe on that layer as well. Let's just hit F7 to remove that keyframe and remove this one. 
and oh, I know why. There's movement on the 3D object for the loft because there's movement on that car peg. So, um, you know, I probably don't want to make this loft actually a child of the car. What I should do in this case is I should have a peg that is just for the sizing. And uh, why don't I just go in here and copy the sizing information from the car peg that I had. So my scale in here is 0 0.055. So I'll put that on this one instead. So let's just put that as 0 0.055 to make that match this one and then I'll put the uh, scale here, 0 0.055 scale x, scale y and this one also has a scale z because it's a 3D so I have to enable 3D on that and then 0 0.055 and then I'll just put it on this one back to 1 it's probably the easiest way uh, so originally it's, it would have been better if I just originally had um, one peg for the sizing and then another peg to do the animation on, but just to fix it now. Just double click on that and then put this at one. Let's try that. Whoa, what did I do? Oh, because there's an animation on it. So let's remove the animation from the scale. Sorry about this, guys. I should do it right from the beginning. Okay, there we go. So now I've got this car animating through. And uh, it's looking pretty good, except for the fact that the car is um, behind the building. So I can go ahead and adjust the framing on this. Maybe I want to move the building around. So um, I'll make sure that both the car and the loft are in the same um, scaling factor. So they're both part of that same scaling peg. And then I'll go ahead and um, go on my loft layer here, and I'll adjust the, the position of the loft. So let's just go in that first frame, and maybe I'll move the loft a little bit back. And I can take the loft, and I can also rotate it so it's at the same angle. as the car. So in any case, as you're working here with 3D objects, you um, want to make use of your top view, your perspective view, your side view, and so on to really get these guys um, arranging together. And then as you're working with 3D models, you can also um, work with 2D layers in this 3D space. So just like you can in Storyboard Pro, you could go in here and you could have um, you know, a 2D layer that you're drawing on. So let's just add a drawing layer. Oh, I've already got one there. And then I'll draw something. So let's draw in white just because my background here is pretty dark. So I'll grab a white color and I'll just draw something. It's my scribble. So my wonderful scribble now exists in 3D space. So everything that exists in 3D space, you want to enable 3D on probably to be able to move it around and then you can take your transform tool and you can reposition that. So if this is my drawing layer, I want my drawing layer to be in the right Z depth and everything for this scene um, to make it work with the 3D element. So this is a super cool concept to be able to work with 2D elements and 3D elements together in the scene directly. And so at this point, I have to finish up because I've gone way over the time that I was supposed to spend. And um, so at this point now, if you render this out, if you do a file export movie, it will just render it out with the OpenGL preview of your 3D models. Because I don't have any rendering modules in here, it will render out with the OpenGL models uh, or the OpenGL version of the model. So in, in other words, it renders out exactly what you see in the camera view. And the camera view, because it's kind of a preview model, the textures aren't loaded in as the full textures. They're a little bit lower just to save um, the memory. And also, there's no anti-aliasing on these guys. So it's really not good enough for a final render. But if you're just going to rotoscope on top of these things, or um, you know, if you're using the 3D model as reference, 
then this is more than good enough for the purpose of the reference. Uh, but when you want to render out with a final renderer, you really need to use an outside rendering engine. And that is what I will talk about next week. So take care, guys, and I'll see you next week.